Number six, show by suitable net ionic equations that each of the following species can act as a Bronsted Lowry base. And then we have letter D out of the bunch. So in this case, we're saying that C2H5OH is going to act as a Bronsted Lowry base. That's pretty interesting. This is ethanol, the alcohol that we drink if we are over 21 in the United States. Um, generally, that's acidic. But in this case, they want us to act it as a base. So sure. <laughs> uh, background story, Bronsted and Lowry were just the names of two scientists that came up with this idea of what acids and bases do in aqueous solutions, aka in water. And what they found out was that bases, except hydronium ions, which is H+, and they accept the hydronium ions from the acids. Um, but for right now, we're just going to be accepting an H+, because we're just focusing on the base here. So how do we write that in a net ionic equation? Well, the base, which is in this case C2H5OH, the base is coming together with the proton, aka the hydronium, or H+. And since they're coming together, the base is accepting the H+. So the base and the H plus have to be on the same side. So I'm going to start there. C2, H5, OH, and plus H plus. Now, since we're dealing with acids and bases and they want a net ionic equation, we do need a state. Any charged ion is always aqueous, so that's a gimme. And since this is acting as a base, we're going to be saying that this is also in water, aka aqueous. Now since ethanol, C2H5OH, is not on our list of six strong bases, we are going to be at equilibrium with each other. And now all we gotta do is just find out what the conjugate acid is. The word conjugate just means that it's on the product side. Generally, your conjugates are always on the product side. So how do we find that? Well, you just combine everything together. But there's like a little uh, tricky part here, right? In my ethanol, I do have two places to place my hydrogen. Which one is technically correct when I accept this hydrogen? Is it going to be H6 or is it going to be H2? Well, this comes from knowing the uh, electronegativity trend on the periodic table. <laughs> How did that become a triangle? Nobody knows. Let's try again. Okay, that's a little better. That's actually much better. All right, so we have electronegativity, right? So here's my little electronegativity. Negativity chart. Here's my periodic table. And remember, as you go from left to right on the periodic table, electronegativity increases. But as you go down, electronegativity will decrease. So your hydrogen will basically uh, be bound with the more electronegative element because they want to snatch you up quicker. Basically, that's what's going on in layman's terms. So... Carbon, right, these, these five hydrogens are separated with these two carbons. They're bound to the carbons. And carbon is over here. This hydrogen is bound to the oxygen, which is over here. Oxygen is the more electronegative element because as you go from left to right, electronegativity increases. So it's the oxygen that snatches up this hydrogen. It's not the carbons, one of the carbons. The oxygen gets to it faster. The electronegative element, the more electronegative element, grabs that proton quicker. So we're going to say C2, H5, OH, and now I'm just going to say 2. So that's how we gain one hydrogen. And now I just have to add one to my overall charge. 
Now my ethanol was originally a zero charge. There was nothing here. So I go over here and I say, okay, zero plus one. Zero plus one is just a plus one. So this charge would have a plus charge on it. And since it's now charged, it's aqueous. And now we are done. So this is your complete net ionic equation describing how ethanol can actually act as a base. Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments, subscribe to the channel. Uh, thank you so much for coming to the channel and learning. I really hope we're giving you great educational content out there. Let us know in the comments what you think. Thank you so much, and I will see you in later lessons. Bye-bye.